Now, we will look at how this can be accomplished. So, there are three ways through which CS and CSR can be integrated with HRM. First is economic domain of sustainable HRM. In the economic domain, the most prominent activity or process which can be taken up by HRM is talent management because talent management is having direct impact on the organizational performance. How companies can integrate the CSR into the talent management? First step is through corporate volunteering programs. Corporate volunteering programs make people sensitive, make people aware of the concern of the different stakeholders and that helps them to develop more holistic business solutions. It avoids the short termism. Whenever CSR is integrated in the talent management process, they have to, the talent has to be evaluated beyond the short, short termism. They have to take into account uh, the long term objectives that helps in pursuing the sustainable performance and sustainability agenda and that also helps in investment in the human capital. So, uh, integration of the talent management practices uh, with the CS and CSR is done when long term perspective is taken about the performance management system. More sustainable and purpose driven approach of talent management helps developing talent, helps developing more holistic leadership, more compassionate and sensitive leadership that has positive impact not only on the CS and CSR agenda, it has also positive impact on the business. So, in this way economic domain which is about the real economic reasons why HRM and how HRM can pursue the sustainability agenda. Then comes the social dimension of uh, sustainable HRM. When we talk about the social dimension of the sustainable HRM, we talk basically about two things employees well being and organizational justice. Employee well being is about the health of the employees as well as the job security. So, HRM need to closely examine the job security related issues of the employees. They also need to take into account, they also need to be custodian of organizational justice. First of that is distributive justice. That means, the financial rewards, the rewards being uh, shared, rewards being given across the organization has to be justifiable, has to be fair. Procedural justice, people should able to see the process of distribution of reward to be positive, process of the distribution of reward to be fair for all the members. Informational justice. HR need to ensure that uh, employees have sufficient information, employees have the required information about all those matters which influence their work and influence their working conditions. Interpersonal justice that is about ensuring that everybody is treated with dignity in the organization. So, these are the social dimensions of the sustainable HRM. How social responsibility dimension can be integrated in HRM? There are some examples, there are some uh, ways of doing it. Uh, social projects in the local community can be initiated by HRM uh, and that can be uh, uh, given to the employees and HR can act as a facilitator of, of identification of the projects and identification of the agency with whom uh, employees can work to work on uh, to fulfill uh, to complete these projects. Thinking carefully about the impact on poorer countries of operating through supply or value chain. In the multinational corporations, production work is done in different parts of the world. HRM cannot remain oblivious about the working conditions of the people 
working on the projects, working on the production activities related to the final product of my company, even if they are not my, even if, even if they are not the direct employees of the organization. So, they have to take into account of what, what are the working condition of the people in different parts of the world who are helping in the supply chain, who are part of the supply chain of the multinational corporation. They need to take into account of the human rights issue. Human right should not be violated in the home country as well as the other countries where uh, supply chain partners are working for the organization. In the purpose driven companies, this may even include HRM contribution to addressing grand societal challenges, reducing inequality and decent work and economic growth. There are examples about how HRM is helping in addressing the grand social challenges. That happens in terms of uh, by offering internship, supporting vocational training to the lesser developed countries, uh, connecting the business goal with the sustainability goals. That is also accomplished through enhancing and investing in the quality education, reduced inequality by offering career opportunities to women and the member of the minorities and that is where HRM can play very important role by ensuring the decent work and economic growth by stimulating entrepreneurship activities, social innovation through cross sector partnership, all these things can be facilitated by HRM. Then comes the ecological domain of sustainable HRM. Green HRM practices are defined as HRM activities which enhance the positive environmental outcome. So, one way is by enhancing the knowledge, ability and skills of the employees. By providing the extensive training which aimed at increasing employee awareness of the environmental concerns which include such concerns in the recruitment and selection as well. So, this is first way in which HRM can work towards ecological domain. Second way is through motivation enhancing practices. We all know that uh, individual incentives are very efficient ways of directing the behavior of the employees towards desirable goals. HR can play an important role in directing the desired behavior by linking that behavior, by linking the incentives with the uh, ecological goals. That can also be linked to promotional opportunities, benefits, job security, performance appraisal. Finally, organizations must also, also ensure that they have the proper control mechanism. So, HRM can play role in facilitating the CS and CSR by doing certain things and by helping organization avoiding doing certain things and that, that is what is included in the control mechanism. So, uh, avoiding certain harmful practices, avoiding harm. Uh, can be done by HRM in the CS and CSR domain at the economic, environmental and social front. On the economic front, they can avoid the managerial opportunism and excessive risk taking. If some manager is only pursuing the shareholder value goals at the cost of the stakeholder uh, value goal, that opportunism can be checked and has to be checked by HRM. Uh, because eventually that kind of opportunism uh, leads to the value destruction, not value creation for the organization as well as for the society. Developing a shared sense of purpose that guides the decision making to avoid short term, uh, short term perspective of making business decisions that can be taken care of by the HRM through the uh, uh, enlightened performance management system. HR can avoid harm towards environment by designing the workplace based practices that increase recycling and reduce the harmful emission. So, HR can play active role and in increasing the recycling and uh, uh, reducing the harmful emission by the uh, 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 in the production processes of the organization. It can help in conducting audits to ensure the compliance with the environmental codes. There are uh, 
lots of regulatory codes as well as non regulatory codes related to the environment. HRM can take up those codes and ensure those being followed by the organization. On the social front, HRM can help in eliminating the child and forced labor and that can be done not only in the uh, within the organization, but on low, uh, but also for the uh, channel partners of the organization, they might be operating in different countries. It can help avoid unpaid or overtime hours, HR has to take into account these things. They and ensure that those things are stopped. Uh, HR can also help in designing the sustainable HRM practices like flexible hours, working from home. It can detect the harmful side effects of efficiency focused practices, can commission some of the studies which systematically look at the efficiency focused practices and their impact. So, these are the control mechanism through which HRM can avoid the harm uh, for the employees and for the planet in the business processes. Uh, this uh, diagram is also taken from the Tall Brewster and uh, colleagues paper which was published in 2019. Uh, it talks about sustainable HRM in terms of doing good and avoiding harm on the economic, environmental and social front. So, it gives uh, example for example, uh, on the it gives example in all these fronts uh, like uh, on the economic front HRM's role in facilitating value creation and preservation and on the avoiding harm HRM's role in prevention of the value destruction. How it can be done we just looked at in the previous slide. The sustainable HRM and its practice has to be done on the two dimensions time dimensions and space dimension. Time dimension is about ensuring that goal of creating long term economic value is achieved through the responsible use of resources, that is the abstract principle. Uh, another uh, uh, goal on the time dimension is ensuring that carbon footprint is reduced in the organizational processes. Also on the time dimension is the goal about promoting intergenerational equity within the organization and in the channel partners of the organization. And that has to be done in the space dimensions of HR has to balance these goals or we can say HR can achieve these goals only by balancing some of the seemingly contradictory forces. What are those forces? Those are headquarter versus subsidiary tensions. Uh, headquarter can have one perspective if headquarter is in the uh, Europe in a developed country and if the subsidiary is in the developing country, how these goals can be matched, how these goals can be balanced that is uh, first tension. The second tension is balancing global versus local needs global market, global standard can be of some level, but local conditions may not be easy for organization to achieve those standards. HRM has to find ways, has to be partner with the business in achieving those goals at the local level, which is in line with the best global standards. This is not easy, but uh, that should be the objective of the HRM function. Developed market versus emerging market perspective that keeps coming. Uh, developed markets naturally have social security, naturally have certain environmental laws being followed by other players. Uh, they have availability of uh, some of the resources, some of the basic resources like water or uh, clean air that, that may not be even possible in some of the emerging market perspective. So, how to ensure these uh, uh, standards in the functioning while functioning in the emerging market is not an easy thing, it is a challenge, but that is the next level of challenge for the HRM and HRM has to gear up, HRM has to partner with the business to achieve these challenge. This is not only a challenge for HR, 
this is the challenge for the business leaders, this is the challenge for the business operations people, in the production people, MIS people, this is challenge for everybody. But this is important challenge because by our ability to address these challenge, the based on our, ab so our ability to address this challenge is directly proportional to the sustenance of the human race on the planet because uh, we are already operating on the edges, the earth carrying capacity, uh, environmental degradation, inequality have all are already there at a stage which is not sustainable for the for any uh, for any human race on any planet. So, that these are the grand challenges business organizations have to gear up for that and HRM has to be aware of these challenges and help businesses to address these challenges. So, HRM has to move beyond the compliance orientation, instrument orientation and has to help organization and has to look at their role as a mission led or value driven uh, perspective. And that can, that is the paradigmatic shift required for the HRM to be really a partner for the development of the business organizations, which in turn help in developing the human race and preventing the human race on the planet. I will end this session with uh, a survey result by Edelman. Uh, this is a famous agency, they conduct the trust surveys every year. In the 2009 survey, globally they found that 47 percent people trust across governments and uh, 47 people trust the governments to address the major challenges and more than 70 percent people trust the business organizations to address these challenges. Media uh, out of politics, business media. Uh, media is the least trusted institution, but another important thing from the business organizations perspective is that three out of four respondents agree that company can take action to both increase profits and improve economic as well as the social conditions in the community. And 76 percent people say that CEO should take lead, take the lead on change rather than waiting for governments to impose it. So, uh, this trust survey also suggests that society is looking up to business to be the agent for positive change on the planet and HRM need to gear up, need to partner the business organizations and business leader to achieve this change, which is, which can take the uh, human civilization towards more sustainable future.